of so pride. And pride is the uh, the first sin, I would say, the first sin, uh, S-I-N. You know, it happens in heaven, uh, in the dwelling place of God. Okay, let's move on. Okay, we talk about his origin. Then we talk about his nature. Uh, he came to kill, steal, destroy. He's a murderer, liar, tem temper, uh, angel of light, imposter, accuser of burden, cunning, persuasive, deceiving, devouring. And the list goes on. Then we also talk about his uh, the fallen angels that fell together with him. And they became demons and evil spirit. Okay. And then uh, we also talk about their activities. They cause sickness, infirmity, uh, tormenting their antichrist, deceiving, seducing, lying. They cause spiritual blindness, uh, bondage, addiction, timidity, fear, worries, anxiety. Uh, they are tempter. Uh, they seize and they drive a person, uh, cause sexual immorality, <laughs> lust, and all kinds of uh, perverted imagination. Then their characteristics, they are spirit beings without bodies, they are fallen angels under Satan. They have an intense desire to live in warm body. They attach to a body. They appear, they can appear in all shapes and sizes like fish, serpent, frog, monkey, wolf, and so on. Uh, they're able to change their shape. They can appear as a shadowy, dark figure, a wind, a force, and a breath. Right? And the word spirit uh, in Hebrew is called rauch, which means wind, breath, air, or spirit. That's why uh, 1,000 of them can live inside a man, uh, the demonic, you know, uh, he has 1,000 demons living inside him until Jesus cast them out. Uh, they have different, they have hierarchies, different rankings, right? Uh, that means they have uh, different powers, you know, rulers, principalities, power of darkness, and so on. They live in the heavenly realms. They live in the second heaven. Uh, later on in our studies, I'll explain to you uh, there are three heavens and Paul was taken up to the third heaven. So these spirit beings live in the second heaven. Okay, their personality, they can speak, they have feelings, they have a will, uh, they can decide for themselves. Uh, they work in groups, uh, they live in warm bodies, uh, they are crafty and they are cunning. Then, we, talk, we also talk about demonic behavior and activities. They like to attack the mind and uh, the emotion. Sometimes they can cause you to be moody and also can cause you to have destructive thoughts and even can cause a person to commit suicide. They drive you mad. They can drive you crazy if your life is open to them. Then we also talk about demonic attacks on the body, uncontrollable tongue, and slaving habits like gluttony, alcoholic, drugs, and so on. Sickness and diseases of various kinds, allergies, heart condition, because they are spirit of infirmity. They bring sickness into people, but not all sickness comes from them. So we have to identify their operations through heresy, cults like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, and, and New Age, Philosophy, uh, christ -lum. Uh, The operation includes generational curse, okay, through fam familiar spirit or hereditary spirits, false prophets, Eastern religion, heavy metal music, seductive dances. Uh, also have uh, through occultic practices like fortune telling, magic, charm, sorcery, horoscope, Jomancy, witchcraft, spell, hypnotism, idolatry, and so on. Curses from satanic prophets, charms, talisman, fetish kept in the house or brought back from overseas, being prayed for. So be careful, don't simply collect stuff from overseas. You must know their background. All types of abuses, sexual, physical, emotional, psychological, mental, religious, and so on. 
Okay, so that's uh, roughly what we have studied. All right, so let me show you uh, our lesson for today. Uh, I hope all goes well. Keep your finger crossed. Okay, can you see? Can uh, big enough? Yeah, uh. can, can. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Can, can. Uh, <coughs> okay, I put this up there. Ah, uh, all right. Uh, should I make this bigger? Ah, uh, 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 better, uh. Okay. Can you see better, uh. yeah. You cannot see. Now no how to do it. Huh? Better. You cannot see, then you need to put on a pair of glasses. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Just joking on it. Huh? Okay, introduction. Spiritual warfare is as real as any physical war on earth. I guess by now, all of us already know that. Huh? Because we have proof from the scripture. Tremendous spiritual forces are at war in the heavenlies, right? In the heavenlies, because they stay in the second heaven. Revelation 12, 7, we already touched on that uh, last week. And the church of Jesus Christ is caught in the middle, okay? Now, the church is constantly under spiritual attack, whether we understand it or not, whether we know or not. Regardless of whether you know, whether you understand, the church is constantly under spiritual attack because he wants to cause uh, the Christian to fall. <laughs> right Now, war is the impact of opposite forces for the church to understand the nature of the spiritual war we are fighting. We must first understand the nature of the two kingdoms in conflict the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. It has been in conflict since the creation of uh, the angelic beings, or you can say since Lucifer begins to rebel against God until today. Right? So these two kingdoms, kingdom of God and kingdom of Satan, they are at war all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the kingdom of God? Uh, I have an opportunity, because when I was serving in East Coast, I have the opportunity to visit some of the towns in uh, Thailand. Uh, uh, I, think, I think the nearest one is Golok from Kota Baru, you go up. And then once you cross the custom, and there it was written, there is a big signboard written, Welcome to the kingdom of Thailand. And then they have rules there, you know, punishable punishable by death if you are found having uh, certain grams of uh, drugs. And then uh, you, you cannot import or export drugs or any other suspicious uh, uh, items. It's punishable by death. And they have whole sets of rules, do and don'ts. That is the kingdom of Thailand. So that means that means the, the rule of Thailand. Okay, so the kingdom of God is the realm where God rules as king. Okay, and God also has his standard, also has his rules. Uh, he is in charge and he rules this whole universe. He also wants to rule in man's life as well. The kingdom of God is therefore God's kingly rule in the hearts of those who are fully submitted to him. Uh, Luke 17, 21. Ah, the kingdom of God is here, according to Mark 1, 15, but it is still in the future. Okay? Uh, when, when it is here already in the hearts and life of those who are fully submitted to the Lordship of Christ, in their lives, but it's also in the future because the kingdom of God will only be fully consummated when Jesus Christ fully comes as the true king to re rule and reign in this world. Revelation 19, 11. I will send the notes to you uh, later. 
Okay, you can go through or you can print it out uh, so that you can write notes, right? Okay, now let's look at the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of Satan. Uh, this is actually a repetition of the first lesson. In case some of you just join us uh, last week or this week, you, you might have missed the first lesson. We talked about the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of uh, Satan. So there are three encounters. First encounter is a power encounter. Okay. First Corinthians 4.20 says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Matthew 12.28 says, But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Ah, that's why we say the kingdom of God is now and also fully materialized when Jesus comes again. Okay, So whenever a person accepts Jesus Christ into his life, the kingdom of God has come upon that person. That means the rule and the reign of God has entered into that person. Okay, So it's a power encounter. Right? Uh, we cast out demons by the Spirit of God. Uh, when we encounter them, uh, when they hold people in bondage, we pray against it and we cast it out. So it's a power encounter. Secondly, it's a truth encounter. Light versus darkness, good versus evil, truth versus error. Uh, John chapter 3 verse 19 to 21 says, The light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light. But he who does the truth comes to the light. So it's a truth encounter. Okay, for, for Jesus Christ say, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So, so even when we preach the gospel, we preach the truth of God's word, right? To dispel against darkness, against lies, errors, deception. So it's a truth encounter. Ephesians 5, 8 to 13 says, For you were once darkness, that means living in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. So walk as children of light and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. And so it's light versus darkness, truth versus error. Okay, so it's, so it's a truth encounter. Thirdly, it's an allegiance encounter. That means obedience, right? Obedience to God's will or obedience to Satan's will. It's allegiance. You know, you pledge your allegiance to God or to Satan. Acts 17, verse 29 to 31 says, We are the offsprings of God. He commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness. And so he commands all men everywhere to repent. So are we going to repent in obedience to God or are they going to continue to worship Satan or follow Satan's will. So it's an allegiance encounter. Okay? So the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of Satan is encounter. Now this is new. There are three levels of spiritual warfare according to uh, Reverend Daniel Ho. Okay, Dato, Reverend Dato Daniel Ho in his in his teaching on spiritual warfare, he shared about these three uh, levels of spiritual warfare. Uh, the unseen realms of, realms of darkness. Firstly, in spiritual warfare, there is the ground level. So when a person pray uh, for healing and deliverance and casting out of demons, it deals with demonic deliverance in individuals. So it's a ground level. It's the first level. It's the very simple level. Uh, it's a very basic level. You just pray and in the name of Jesus, just cast the demon out. right? But of course, there are other things involved. So it's the ground level. The second level, slightly more difficult, deals with the power of darkness. Uh, using channels such, such as the New Age movement, Eastern religion like Buddhism, Hinduism, 
Taoism, Confucianism, Shintoism, and all this witchcraft and cults. This is slightly difficult, but it's still uh, in the first level, it means uh, as I as I told you earlier, Paul mentions about the three heavens. The first heaven is the atmospheric air, right? It's the air that we breathe, right? It's the first level. The second level is the heavenly places. So strategic level is confronting territorial spirit. That means they are high above the ground, you know, moving in territories, principalities, holes of wickedness in the heavenly places. The heavenly places is the second realm, is the second heaven. And Paul says he was taken up to the third heaven, to the dwelling place of God. So according to Paul, there are three heavens, the atmospheric, the heavenly places where Satan and the evils dwell, and then the third heaven, the dwelling place of God. All right. So these are the three levels of spiritual warfare. Uh, it's a confrontation. All right? We, As we learned earlier in our first lesson, we don't purposely go against them. We we don't simply bind them as we pass through temples or la tokong or whatever. We don't just don't go there and just bind, 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 bind. We we do we don't do that. We only defend ourselves, we only stand against their attacks, then we begin to bind them. Okay, I'll explain that later. All right. Now we want to talk about the the, the believers and kingdom authority the believers and kingdom authority. Now that we have been translated, according to First Peter, we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So now we are in God's kingdom. right? So let's talk about A, the believer's position in Christ. Our legal position in Christ. That means the moment we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, we have been justified. Because of our faith, right? we are made righteous because of our faith in Jesus. And we have been given a legal standing before a holy God. Okay? It's, it's legal. Just like when, uh, when a man and a woman uh, register to get married, so in front of the, the judge, uh, they are legal. They consider as legal. Okay, it's a they have a legal standing. So they are really husband and wife. Now in Ephesians chapter one verse eighteen nineteen, here it says, "I," Paul says, "I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which." He has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in the same and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength. Okay, it's, it's saying about when we have been justified, we have a legal stand before God, we have this glorious inheritance and also great power within us the working of God's mighty strength within us because we have the legal position in Christ. Then Ephesians 2, 6 says, and God raised us up with Christ. Christ means the anointed one, Jesus Christ, and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Jesus. That means we are seated with Jesus. We rule together with Jesus in the heavenly realms in Okay, we rule in the heavenly realms. That means we are lifted higher above than the fallen angels. We rule and reign with Christ, seated with him. It speaks of power and authority, right? We rule in the heavenly realms. Romans 8, 16 to 17 says, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. And now we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. 
If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. So we are heirs of God, co-heir with Christ. That means all that, all that God has for Jesus Christ, we also have. Means whatever Jesus Christ has, we also have. Because we are co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Okay? Because our legal position in Christ. So we understand that. Right? We have a position in Jesus Christ. We are children of God. Next, our experience in the Spirit. God has also produced a vital experience in us by His Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says, But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with Him in Spirit. What is your understanding of that? We are one with Him in spirit. You know? That means we, we, we kind of join together with Jesus Christ. Just like the, in marriage, the, the pastor will pronounce, now you are no longer two persons, but, but one person. So what God has put together, let no man separate. So the two has become one. Right? So now we are like one with him in spirit. Romans 8, 26, 26 says, For we do not know how to pray, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us. Right, The Holy Spirit is inside us, intercedes for us with groaning too deep for words. Sometimes you, you see people groaning or speaking in tongues because they cannot express themselves in human language. So they groan deep within them. The Holy Spirit Himself intercede for us, groaning, okay, too deep for words, words that cannot express. So we are one in the Spirit. We, okay, our experience in the Spirit. That's why we are able to call God Abba Father. Then the believer's authority in Christ, authority. The writers of Psalms 8 6 stated specifically, You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. The him here is not referring to Jesus. Okay, it's referring to mankind. You have made him to have dominions over the works of your hand and have put all things under his feet. So Jesus Christ has given his authority to the believers. For example, Luke 9, 1 and verse 1 and verse 2 says, Jesus had called the twelve together and Jesus gave them power. You know, Jesus gave the twelve apostles power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So, like today, we are also being sent by Jesus. We also receive his power and his authority to drive out demons, to, to heal people in Jesus' name, to cure diseases, and to preach the kingdom of God, and to heal the sick. Okay? So, we need to understand that. Luke 10, 19, 20, again, the scripture says, I have given you authority. You have the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions, to overcome all the power of the enemy. Not, not, not literally snakes and scorpions, you know, they just represent something which is dangerous and evil. So we're able to trample on these things and to overcome all the power of the enemy. That means we are we have what in us, uh, the power of God to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So Jesus Christ says, okay, do not rejoice just because the Spirit submit to you. Right? The Spirit has to submit to us. If we, if we live in obedience and submission to Jesus Christ, 
The scripture says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. The spirit will submit to us. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. All right. Matthew 16, 19. For I have given you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. The keys, the keys is used to lock and unlock. That means we have we have the power to unlock things in people's life. Right? Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in the heavenly realms. Like you binding the work of demons and evil spirit. Whatever thing you loose on earth set people free from bondage and captivity will also be loose in the heavenlies. Okay? Mark 6, 7, 13 says, Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, calling the twelve to him. He sent them out two by two. Okay, evangelism is two by two. And gave them authority over evil spirits. They have authority over evil spirit. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. Here, all these are related, you know. That means, uh, that means demons can cause people to fall sick and fall ill. Okay? And they need to be driven out. And then, you anoint them with oil and you heal them. So it's, 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 it's all related, you know. Okay. Afterward, I'll explain more to you. Mark 16, verse 15 to 18 says, And this sign will accompany those who believe. Uh, many people ask the question, you know, those who believe, that means including uh, non-charismatic, if they believe, can they also do this? In my name, in Jesus' name, they will. They can, they will drive out demons in Jesus' name. They will speak in new tongues, okay, uh, a, a new language. They will pick up snakes with their hands, okay, pick up snakes, poisonous snakes. When they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Okay, question. Uh, maybe some of you can answer. Uh. What happens if we pick up snakes today? Poisonous snake. And if the snake were to... Uh, what do you call that? Uh? Bite us. Bite us. <laughs> So simple, so I can't find the right word. By us, will we die from the poison? Or we might. Okay, good. Or if somebody wants to harm us, okay, put poison in the drink, then we drink it. Will we die? No. Huh. Sure. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you for answering, uh, Elder Moonming. Okay. Last time I also think like you, but later somebody explained to me. Okay, Jesus calls the twelve together, give them power, authority, drive out demons, and he sent them out to preach the gospel. Okay, Jesus sent them out to preach the gospel. Whoever whom God sent, the presence of God and the power of God, protection of God shall be with them to heal, to drive out demons. And all this, okay. Then you see again, uh, uh, again, Jesus sent them out two by two, gave them authority over evil spirit, and drove out demons, anointed many sick people with oil, and healed them. So these verses uh, seems to tell us that when we are sent out, when we do mission work, or we preach the gospel, uh, to unbelievers uh, across land or across country. When we do that, in the name of Jesus, we are protected by Jesus. Only when Jesus sent us, 
commission us. Then when we pick up snakes, when we drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. But if you are on your own and you are not close to Jesus and we are living a life that is not in submission to Jesus and uh, maybe we are fooling around with the occult and then we go and play with poisonous snakes and then we go and drink poisonous uh, poisonous drink, drink that has poison or we are poisoned by people. I think we will die, you know. I believe because yeah. we, are, we are not doing God's work and we have been idling around. That's why even King David also fall into lust. You understand what I'm saying? We are idling around. We are not doing God's work. We haven't been sent out. And then this verse is not for us, you know. This sign will accompany those who believe in my name and this, okay? Hmm. And then send out two by two, give them authority. When we have been sent out, we have the authority over evil spirit when we are doing the work of God. So uh, we need to understand that we, we, don't, we don't go and play around with poisonous snakes or, or thought that we drink poisonous things, we will not die. But there are stories I heard uh, from missionary in uh, from Sarawak. I uh, don't know whether you have heard of his name, Tom Hamblin. Tom Hamblin, a missionary from Sarawak. Uh, he came and he shared that there are missionaries in Sarawak uh, that preach the word of God and, and, and they went from village to village and many of these uh, Dayaks and Ibans and all this, they came to know the Lord. And then those Muslim fellows, they they try to harm him. They try to uh, poison his drinks. And then, and then, true enough, they poisoned his drink and he drank. And then they thought that tomorrow he will die. The missionary will die. But to their astonishment, the missionary still walking around and preaching the gospel. Uh, Tom Hamblin, you know, a missionary, shared with us this uh, in his seminar, that God really keep his word when you drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. But while they are doing God's work, you know, while they are sent out by God, but if you are not, uh, better don't test God. <laughs> okay? You understand what I'm trying to say? Better don't test God. All right? This verse might not be for you. All right? Okay? You, it, it's okay if you don't agree with me. It, it doesn't matter. All right? Uh, this is what I tell you, huh? We must also accept the believer's position in Christ. See, we must truly believe uh, this divine revelation, accept, accept it what we have become when we are placed in Jesus Christ, when we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So when we operate our faith in that position, uh, in, in our new position in the Lord, we have the strength to live a life of the calling which you will call Ephesians 4 1. The only works that are pleasing to God are those that spring forth as a fruit of His grace, His divine enabling, operating through our faith in His Word. So we need to accept the believer's position in Christ. We need to accept who the Word of God says we are, right? Okay. Then lastly, we need to enforce the believer's authority. After knowing this, that, knowing our position and one in the spirit and all this, uh, what is the use? Like our government is very, very good in this area, setting a lot of rules, 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 rules but they didn't enforce it. They don't catch the culprit. They don't enforce. So people uh, don't subscribe to the rules and regulation. So you need to enforce, you see. See, the cross has completely destroyed Satan's entire legal claim. Right? In fact, when Jesus died on the cross, he, he made a mockery out of Satan, destroying his power okay, over his church. But every legal victory must be enforced. Okay? We, we, we need to put it into action. Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19 says, and I tell you that you are Peter. On this rock, 
I will build my church and the gates of Hades or uh, gates of hell shall not overcome it. And I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, wherever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven and whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. But we we cannot simply bind, as I say, we 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 don't go against uh, the evil one if we are not being attacked. You, you remember in Acts 19.15, uh, we have already uh, touched on this in our first lesson. Remember the seven sons of Sceva? Okay, He saw Paul uh, casting out demons in the name of Jesus. So he also tried to follow. Right? He also tried to cast out demons in the name of Jesus. And then the, the demons inside the victim says to the seven sons of Sceva, he says, Jesus Christ I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Demons doesn't know him. Whether he's a believer or not, I'm not sure. But the demon doesn't know him. And then the scripture says, the demon pound onto him, you know. And then beat him up. So we make sure we are close with God. We cannot simply bind, right? Unless we we need to know uh, the leading of God, right? That's what I want to say. Matthew 28, 18 to 20 says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Okay, so therefore go. And make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this speaks of the Trinity, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Even though the word Trinity does not appear in Scripture, just like the word rapture doesn't appear in Scripture, but here it speaks of the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the end of the age. Okay, we must enforce the believer authority. We must go and make disciples of all nations. We must baptize them in the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We must do follow up and teach them to obey all that God has commanded us. Okay, so we need to enforce the believer's authority in Christ. Okay, I'll stop here. Uh, any questions so far before we go into the blood, uh, the word, and the name of Jesus? And any, uh, any, anything you want to ask, you want to clarify, you want to add? Uh, any question? Okay. Yeah. Pastor, I'm, <clears throat> I'm uh, curious. Mm. Uh, here, the, the Bible says, Sometimes uh, angels and people appear, you know, like angels. So can can demons also appear like people? Oh, because uh, who, who, who appear like angels? Who appear like angels? No, because sometimes angels will appear appear like a human. The Bible says. Ah, uh, angels can appear like human. Correct, correct. So can can demons also, or the evil spirit, or unclean spirit? appear as human as well? Okay, good question. I will let the rest of you answer, even though I know the answer, but I will not answer until you answer. Anyone want to try? Can demons appear like a human being and yes. deceive? Uh, <clears throat> to me, it's yes. Uh, okay, I don't know who you are. <laughs> Stephanie, Stephanie, Pastor. Okay, Stephanie, that's good, Stephanie. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, your answer is yes, ah. Uh. Demon can appear like a human being. Right, Stephanie? Hey, where are you? Yes, Pastor James. Yes, Pastor James. Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay. Okay. Uh anyone else got uh your answer is different from Stephanie? Satan can appear as an angel of light. So Ooh, can demons. Okay. Possession. Huh? Huh? Through possession. Possession. Yes. Oh, possess the person. Yes. But it's still the same person, but the person has been possessed by Yes, by the demons. Okay. Okay, that's another answer. 
A any any other answer? Any different from these two? Okay, I I watch a uh, a uh, Christian movie uh, uh King of All Kings, King of All Kings, talking about the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, it's an old movie. Uh. Uh, it shows Jesus was tempted in the wilderness and Satan appeared as a human being. The, the devil, the evil one, appeared as a human being. He can appear as a snake in the Garden of Eden. He also can appear as a human being. Okay, he can change his form and size. He can appear as a dark figure, as wind, as breath, as spirit. He can. Okay, so uh, this is my personal opinion, uh, even though the scripture didn't say. I think he can appear as another person if he wants to. But most of the time, he, he can uh, whisper. He can whisper. He can uh, talk to the person just like he whispered to Peter. Do not allow Jesus Christ to go to the cross until Jesus said to Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. So he can uh, influence a person's thoughts and mind. Uh, but the, the scripture didn't uh, reveal black and white that Satan transformed himself or the demons transformed themselves into another person. So... Uh, this is debatable. Uh. Oh. So I I I I dare not tell you can or cannot because it's it's not in the in the Bible. But personally I think he can uh, if he wants to. Alright. Uh Philip, is that okay with you? Okay, I, I can accept uh, some of the answers, uh, Pastor. So I'm uh, still thinking. Seeking more. Uh, ah, okay. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Anyone so else? Pastor, Pastor, yeah, yeah. One more. Yeah, you know, yeah. these people are talking about a paranormal activities. Yeah. Because that, even in the office, in the empty office or in a night shift, uh, people see the chair is moving and certain objects are moving. Uh, even uh, some nurse saw. Even I, before I work in a hospital and the nurse are telling me oh. they really saw a person, they're coming but with but no legs. Hey. So these these are the paranormal activities are happening in certain buildings. Yeah. So what is your uh, answer, Pastor? Uh, again, I will not answer. I will ask <laughs> the rest of you to answer. What do you think? I will answer you later afterward. What do the rest of you think? Just try lah. It's okay, Anna. It could be an evil spirit lah. All the okay. Uh, okay. So who uh, Okay. Uh, you want to share some more? Hospital at night, yeah. Ah. Uh, These are all related to me by nurses uh, by patients uh. Yeah. It actually, yeah. Uh, ah, uh, could see this shadow moving in, you know, and a very big, gigantic image come in pass by, yeah. Uh, uh. And then the next day, I, you know, when I say like that, my my. My this Goosebump. one, stand up. And then uh, there, there, there are a few deaths, you know, in the ward. Uh, 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 they, this one was related to me by by uh, 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 a relative. Uh, uh, relative that looked after a, a patient. Uh, the, I think the daughter uh, looked after uh, one patient. Uh, so she actually uh, saw the image just pass by, you know, very big, gigantic image yeah. pass by. Next day, uh, there uh, are a few uh, patients that look. Uh, you. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And then there was case uh, that the patient saw uh, um you know they uh, this patient is actually very very severely burned, you know, cannot mm. cannot walk one. Mm. Uh he was in the in the burn unit, you know. Mm. And you ask him to do exercise, also he will scream on top of his voice. Mm. Next day, uh, the <coughs> nurse found found him uh, mm. run over the end of the ward, you know. It seems uh, he saw something uh, and he was uh, so frightened. Uh, uh, cannot walk, also he ran. Uh. Oh, yo. <laughs> so this is something that 
I because I never work night shift, uh, I never encounter this is something that we heard from a patient. Uh, and then even patients say that uh, somebody will go and gri gri go and uh, catch out the feet, you know, the mm-hmm. feet, and then they they open up and and ask the person, don't catch out me, but actually nobody. Mm. And then they got scared, you know, some of them got scared and then cover their face. Uh. This mm. is happening in hospital. Uh. Mm. Yeah. So with the yeah. evil spirit, uh, I think. Yeah, evil spirit, yeah. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else have uh, uh, uh yeah uh Pastor James yes, uh, when, uh, I was Joseph Joseph ah uh? uh, Joseph when I was uh, I admitted at uh, this uh uh Shalam Shalam uh, due to COVID uh, due mm-hmm. to COVID mm-hmm. in the middle of the night in the middle of the night as I I think I was uh half I think half asleep like half asleep mm. I can feel that some like like a like a serpent you know like a serpent mm-hmm. uh, uh. Come, come, coming through onto my body, you know, uh. coming onto my body, and then they come up. I can hear he sing sound, you know, he sing sound, uh. like like a snake, like a snake, you know. Uh. And and then uh, it come come to come come near to my my face, you know. Oh, uh. come near to my face. I thought I, I thought he would cover me, you know. Then I speak, I spoke in tongues. I spoke uh. in tongues. Oh, suddenly this disappear, disappear. Oh. You know, yeah. that's like. That's a snake, snakes. He sings so sound. Snake sound, snake sound. Oh. But you're sure you're awake, lah? I'm half awake, half awake. Oh. Because at the time they, they give me medicine, I think. Oh. Uh. Uh, uh, Pastor so, James, ah. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, so, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Joseph. And I think uh, this uh, because I got a few friends who are staff nurses. Uh, so when they are doing the night shift, uh, they hmm. dare not take off their cap or no. Oh. Even some of them are non-Christian, uh, they recognize that uh, actually God gave them this spiritual authority, you know. So mm. at night when they are doing the night shift, uh, mm. they, they also put on their, their cap on, you know. You see, it seems uh, they 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 are they won't see all these uh dark, dark uh images. Oh uh, I don't know how because I never worked night shift, uh, so oh. how about I have friends who uh, a very good friend uh, who, who, who is uh, still, we are still in contact one. She mm. told me, yes, in fact, uh, all the nurses will do that. They will put on that cap. Oh. When they do night shift, oh. they will take out. Mm. Any explanation why they put Which on your the authority? Because last time when I was working in the hospital, uh, we had this uh, hospital Christian fellowship. Uh. So we, we, um, we, we are sort of like uh we we were taught uh, and later we understand that we are given this authority, you know, as a as a professional who work in a hospital. So God mm. actually also gives us this authority, you know, mm-hmm. uh, spiritual authority, uh, that we can actually walk around the ward uh, and minister to the patient. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. That's why we, we can see uh, how we can we can uh being, being, being souls for the Lord in the hospital, in fact, it's easier compared to outside people when people are well. Uh, they are standing, they are looking at the world. When they are lying down, uh, they are looking to God. You know? mm. so, uh, so it really are uh, very good, this hospital Christian fellowship, you can really win a lot of souls for the Lord. Oh, that's good. Well, God gave us this spiritual authority to work in the hospital. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's it's good. a bit of our sharing. Uh. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for sharing. It's good. Uh, anyone else would like to share? You can ask different question, another question. Okay. Uh, concerning the moving object, uh, I think I think there's a name for those naughty spirit. Uh, they call portugais, is it? Portugais. Portugais, yeah. Portugais. Portugais, yeah. They will move tables, they will move. They chair. Spirit, uh. Uh, what spirit? Naughty spirit. Playful, playful. playful spirit. Ah. Uh, they will uh, not harm you one. Uh. Yeah, yeah. They Even to, yeah. They just want to you to 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 feel the presence. Uh. Uh, frighten you, yeah. They love to fear, scare people. <laughs> yeah, so uh I I believe some of these experiences are real. Uh. Some mm. uh, not not all. Some could be 
啊，我要讲咧 ，illusion 啊，啊 ，some could be 啊、uh, ，due to various reason 啊 ，OK， 啊、uh, ，so so not not everything caught on tape 啊、uh, are real， you know? sometimes we just make things up， but I know such things do happen， OK， the demons are real， evil spirits are real， OK。Ah,、uh, if they choose to manifest before you, in front of you, they can do that if they want to. Okay, let's move on. Ah,、huh? okay. Ah,、uh, okay. The believers' weapons of warfare. After, ah,、uh, saying all about authority and legal standing and everything, finally we come to, ah,、uh, the most important part, lah. Okay, when you wage spiritual warfare, you we cannot use worldly weapons. You know what are worldly weapons? They instill fear. Ah,、uh, they instill fear, and ah,、uh, they have authority over you. They use anger. Ah,、uh, they they use ah,、uh, violent words. They scold you. Ah,、uh, all these are weapons, natural weapons. To intimidate you, right? But our weapons are different. We don't use all those things. We don't put fear, threat, you know,、uh, accusation. We don't use this thing. No point. Okay. The believer's weapon for warfare is firstly, the blood of Jesus. Okay, the blood of Jesus. Thank you. How apply the blood in the Old Testament? Okay, let's see how they apply. The blood of the lamb in the Old Testament. The practice of applying the blood is based upon the account in Exodus chapter twelve. God instructed the people of Israel to kill a sacrificial lamb. Ah,、uh, this is this is in context with ah、uh, God sending a tormentor at the at the last ah、uh, the last plague that is the death of the firstborn. Whether Egyptian or Israelites, okay, the last plague is the death of the, the firstborn, and so, God instructed the people of Israel to kill a sacrificial lamb, place the blood on their door frames, thereby protecting their household from the plague of death. That lamb was a foreshadow of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ Himself. Who sacrifice at Calvary and will deliver all mankind from spiritual death? Okay, so this is what they need to do. Ah,、uh, they have to.、Uh, I think afterward we will we will repeat the we will repeat the same thing. But anyway, I just mentioned now lah. They have to use the high soap and dip into the the blood, and then they have to smear the doorpost and the lintel in the sign sign of a cross. Horizontally and 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 diagonally, horizontally and diagonally.、Eh, vertically. Yeah. Sorry, horizontally and vertically. So that's a sign of a cross, right? The two poles and then the lintel above the door. Okay. So when when ah、uh, when the deaf spirit pass by, sees the blood of the lamb on the door poles and lintel, it will. Passover, that's why we call that the Passover, and this is a foreshadow of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who sacrificed, shed his blood to deliver all mankind. Okay, that's the first thing in the Old Testament. The second thing is, what is the significance of applying the blood of Jesus today? We need to understand this because I have heard all kinds of prayers. Ah,、uh, we apply the blood of Jesus onto the car. We apply the blood of Jesus onto the baby. We apply the blood of Jesus onto almost everything, lah. We just apply something like some kind of a magical formula that guarantees protection from adversity. Ah,、uh, that is not true. We must understand what does it mean to apply the blood of Jesus today. All right. Now, to apply the blood of Jesus over ourselves and our loved ones in prayer and in spiritual warfare. Is a way of declaring to the devil that Jesus' blood creates a boundary he cannot violate. Okay, we apply the blood of Jesus. You see, in Exodus chapter twelve, verse twenty-two says, "I, Moses said to them, 
and none of you shall go outside of the door of this house. Once you apply the blood on the doorpost and lintel, you close the door, and then none of you shall go outside of the door. Okay, what does that mean? It means that once you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you don't you don't go outside of Jesus Christ. You don't go outside of his protection. That means you don't meddle with sin. You don't meddle with the occult. If you do that, there's no guarantee for protection because you open your life to satanic attack. Right? Only believers can apply this precious blood because Jesus Christ died for those. Although he died for the whole world, the whole world is savable. But actually, those who are saved are those who receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So only believers can apply this precious blood. But we must not treat this as some kind of magical formula. Guarantees protection from <laughs> adversity. So we don't simply say, you know, I apply the blood of Jesus over my business. Apply the blood of Jesus over the church. You, we, we just don't simply proclaim and then claim it, you know. Right, they are. They, you you need to to live a, a submissive life. You shall not go outside of the door of this house. Moses say. Okay, you cannot expose yourself to the spirit of death. Okay, you must stay inside the house, protected by the blood of the lamb. Just like today, we must stay close to Jesus, protected by His blood. All right. So when we confess our sin and repent from our rebellion against God, we receive forgiveness and cleansing to the blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus delivers us from the curse and the power of sin. It is also the basis of our authority over the enemy. So we can hardly claim to be under the blood of Jesus if we are walking in deliberate disobedience. You cannot, the blood of Jesus cannot protect you if you are walking in deliberate disobedience. So to apply or to cover the blood of Jesus is to choose to walk in obedience and submission to his will and to the word of God. That is what it means to apply the blood of Jesus. Okay, stay close to the Lord. All right, don't walk in deliberate disobedience. Don't Get yourself involved in the occultic things. Apply the blood of Jesus. The blood scripture. Revelation 12, 11. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Okay. And by the word of their testimony, they did not love their own life so much as to string from death. They overcame the evil one by the blood of the Lamb and by the mouth of their testimony, okay, by the blood of the Lamb. That means even if they die, uh, they die for Jesus' sake. They will never deny. Okay? Exodus 12, 13, 22 to 23. The blood will be a sign for you on the house. I'm going back to Exodus. Where you are, and when I, the Lord says, seize the blood, I will pass over you. No destruction plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Take a bunch of high soap, dip into the blood in the basin, put some of the blood on top and on both sides of the door frame. Not one of you shall go out the door of this house until morning. That means you must stay within God's protection. You don't. You must be obedient, you must listen to God's instruction. If we go outside the door, we'll be struck by the enemy. When the Lord goes through the land and strike the Egyptian, he will see the blood on top and the side of the door frame and will pass over that doorway. And he will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down. Okay? So today, spiritually, <laughs> We can say we have applied the blood of Jesus when we accept Jesus into our life. Mm. Right? The blood of Jesus already cleanses mm. of our sin. First John 1 John 1.7 says, If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. We 
must choose to walk in the light. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If you confess your sin, He is faithful and just to forgive your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Right? So if we have sinned against God, confess your sin and He is faithful and just right, to cleanse all our sin. Okay, that is, that is what it means to, to apply the, not literally smear the blood of Jesus. Okay, that is the B. Now is the N. The N means the name of Jesus. Just now, uh, Elder Moonming has, has chosen the right song. The name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. Right, the one and only name. The name that is before creation. The name of Jesus, the balance of power on earth rests with the believers operating in the name of Jesus. The balance of power on earth, you know. I mean, we make a difference, you see. It rests on the believers when we operate in the name of Jesus. The authority is complete in the believer as long as he is in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So it's really up to us. And Satan know we have that authority using the name of Jesus, but he hoped we will stay ignorant. So we must be as convinced that there is power in Jesus' name as the devil is convinced. Really, there is power in the name of Jesus. Uh, Jesus said, ask anything in my name and the Father will do for you. Okay? Because Philippians 2, 9 to 11 says, because Jesus Christ was obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord in the glory of the Father. See that his name is above Every other name is the name that demons fear. At the name of Jesus, every demon must bow, every sickness must bow, every diseases must bow, every difficulty must bow. Okay, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So, this is a very powerful verse. Mark 16 17 to 18 says, This sign will accompany those who believe. All right, in my name. Okay. Somebody is playing video game. Ah, <laughs> ah can you don't play video game? In my name, they will drive out demons. Only in Jesus' name, you know. You cannot drive out demons in any other name. Not like the sons of seven sons of Sceva trying to drive, drive out demons. In my name, they will dry up demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. They drink daily poison. It will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on the sick and they will get well. So every one of us, we can pray for the sick. We need to claim this promise of God. The word of God says we will place hands on the sick and they shall get well. They will get well. Let me share with you a testimony that I encounter while I was in U I was when I was in UK. You know, in UK, uh, uh, they like to do this car boot sale, you know. That means uh on a public holiday or, or on Sunday, uh all these people uh, they will put all the things that they do not want, uh, like house cleansing. Uh, watches, uh, shoes, uh, rackets, uh, clothing, uh, bottles, uh, whatever you can name. Uh, okay? Because some, some of these, uh, most of these British, uh, they like to collect old stuff on them. So they will put it inside a car and then they will drive to an empty space and all of them will open their car boot, set up a table, and then people will just go there and buy all those things, uh, coins, uh, cups, uh, whatever. So my wife and I, after church service on Sunday, we also like to buy some of these souvenirs because it's cheap. Ma. It's secondhand, it's old, you know, but it's usable, it's cheap. So we go, to go and buy. La. So one Sunday, both of us, we, we went uh, 
I think we were in Southampton at the time, during the 90s. She was doing her master in South, Southampton University. So uh, to cut the long story short, uh, my wife moved ahead. So I was I, I was a bit slow. Uh, I was looking at the stuff. And then suddenly people begin to scream, you know, help, somebody help. Help this man, elderly man. Somebody help. Somebody call the ambulance. Is there a doctor around? People are just shouting and screaming. And then I went in uh, like Kepo, like that. Uh. So I went in and have a look, uh, you know, what is happening. And then there are voices in my head, you know. Uh, voices in my head. Like two voices. One voice is, I believe it's the Holy Spirit. Lah. You must go and help. You already done that. You know how to do that. You know how to pray for the sick. You know how to cast out demons. I have taught you in Dungun. So you must do that. Okay, you are a pastor. You must do that. Then another voice counter in my head also. No, you cannot do that. You are not a pastor here. You are only pastor in Malaysia. Here nobody knows you. You don't do that. You do that after the, you pray for the person. The person die. Eh? Then they will put you in jail, you know. They will catch you and, and throw you in jail. You don't do that. You are a stranger here. Why you want to risk your life? So it's like two spirits, uh, two voices uh, in my head. I'm just struggling to do or not to do. You know? So I have a choice uh, to do or not to do. Uh, uh, sometimes I'm bold and sometimes I'm fearful. After all, I'm I'm also a human being. You know, My flesh also tries to control me. Fear try to control me. Then then later I choose to do, right? Because I feel that I there is somebody that needs help and there's no doctor around, only one spiritual doctor that is me. So I thought give it a try. Lah. You know, after all, I'm a pastor, I've done that before. So I went and I knelt down. I lay, I told the wife, I said, I'm a pastor, don't worry. Can I pray for your husband? The husband is suffering from epilepsy. A white foam came out from his mouth and he was shaking all over. I think in Cantonese, uh, Sohun, is it called uh, Fat Yong Tiu? Uh? Fits. Correct, correct. Fat, Fits, fat, yong, fat, fat yes, yong Tiu. Yes, yes, Fits, uh. ah, yang tiu. Ah, fat yang tiu. Okay, so white foam was coming out from his mouth. So he was shaking all over and cannot see the eyeball, uh, cannot see the the, the black color one, can, I only see the white. So I was praying. <clears throat> I just simply buy. Nah. Whatever I know, I will just speak. Nah. In the name of Jesus, cast you out. Spirit of epilepsy, spirit of infirmity, come against you in Jesus' name. I speak all the correct words, nah, all the right words. I pull you out from the root in Jesus' name. I don't know whether this old man is a Christian or not. But usually, old people go to church in UK. You cannot find young people. No adults, no married couples. All oldies. So when all these oldies die out, uh, that's why the church turned into uh, uh, libraries, libraries, and also coffee shop, and and other things uh, sell to other other religion. Uh, they occupy the church. Uh. So that's, that's sad. Uh. So I don't know whether this old man it's a Christian or not. But anyway, I just pray. Lah. Even non-Christian also can cast out. So I just pray. Lah. I pray. And, <coughs> uh, and lo and behold, after my prayer, he opened his eyes, you know. The first thing he saw was my face. Then he asked, who are you? He asked me, who are you? I wanted to say, I'm your friendly neighbor, Spider-Man. But I didn't say that, lah, of course. So I, I told him, I'm a pastor. I just pray for you. And uh, I believe God has delivered you. And so the, the, the wife came to hug me. You know. The wife was so very big size. Huh? She <laughs> to hug me, you see, very tight. Say, oh, thank you, thank you, pastor. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I say, uh, 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 glory to God. It's Jesus Christ who heals him. Uh, not, not me. Really, it's Jesus Christ. Mm. Uh, just then, before I can continue, uh, I heard the siren, the the ambulance. ambulance came ambulance came and then some some of the British they put up their thumb they say oh cheers Mike cheers cheers Mike cheers that means saying oh you've done a good job you've done a good job uh, he, he is he is already awake so 
So I I hope I hope he's okay. I believe he's okay because he's awake and uh, mm. and he can talk and you know it sensibly. So the the nurse came and picked him up on a, what what you call that a stretcher and put him up in the ambulance and drove him away. And um, people came and shake my hand, pat my back and say, oh, good job, Mike. Well done. Good job. Good job. I quickly ran and looked for my wife. <laughs> so that's what happened. You see, I, I have an experience uh, and, and encounter. But what even you call out, call the name wrongly. Uh, let's say it's not a spirit of epilepsy. You just say spirit of infirmity. Mm. Right? Spirit of infirmity <clears throat> include everything. Mm. Cancer, la, huh? sister Sophon. Cancer, la, epilepsy, la, boils, la. anything, la, any kind of sickness is an infirmity. Yeah. So he, he has been he has been uh, uh arrested by a spirit of infirmity. Ma. So I, I just pray and then set him free. And I feel good inside him. Yeah. I I know I have made a right decision. Mm. I overcame that fear. I believe. That voice, the other voice inside me, uh, is demonic. It can come inside you, you know. I mean, it can whisper into your mind, you know, put fear in you. So this is my encounter. So, uh, just a little bit of experience. Okay. So, see, Christians have the authority over demons in Jesus' name. You must, you must cast out in Jesus' name because that's the only name they fear. That's the only name that defeated them at the cross. Mm, yes. Right? They must submit to that name. See, our authority comes with our intimate relationship with Jesus. Okay, John 15, I am the wine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, the same we will do much because without me, you can do nothing. So intimate relationship with Jesus, without a close relationship. Hey, Pastor, excuse me, I have a something on. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. Hey, those hmm. of you need to go. Uh, please, you can excuse yourself. Don't worry. All right. Uh, for those of you who want to stay on, you can stay on. It's okay. All right. Just, just, just excuse yourself if you have to do something. It's all right. Uh, no worries. All right. So without a close relationship with Jesus, we have no basis for taking authority over the demons. They know it. They know, you know. They know I, uh, your life is not right with God. Like, how can you cast me out? See, God has given Jesus the authority over all other powers. So the church being the body of Christ can use his name with authority. Mm. You know, I, I heard a, a preacher uh, that came to the church in Dungun from Singapore. Those days when I was in Dungun, we have a lot of visiting speakers everywhere. He shared with me, you know, he shared in his church uh, at one time, they prayed for a person, you know, who who was, uh, I don't call demon possessed, like, afflicted by demons. So he has manifestation everywhere. And so the group of elders and, and uh, leaders, uh, a few pastors from his church, pray for that brother. Pray, 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 pray. Bye. Nothing happened. Pray so long, speak in tongues, whatever. Nothing happened. Still manifesting. And then the voice came, you know. Uh, that pastor told me, uh, our visiting, our guest speaker told me, he said, the voice came out from that the victim, la, you know, using his own voice, say, how can you drive me out when there is disunity among yourself? Mm. That means the leaders are fighting among themselves. Probably elders and elders or elder and pastor. Mm. You see, when there is no unity, uh, when there is no harmony within our group, uh, you cannot drive out. Uh, yeah. They won't listen to you. Uh, they're not afraid of you. Yeah. And then also, through my experience, when you drive out, uh, only one person command. Don't everybody also command. One say, I bind in Jesus' name. One say, I do this to you. One day, I, say, I do that. Who is he going to listen to? <laughs> Only one person take authority. Only one person speak. The others agree or speak in tongues. Mm. Okay? Don't everybody start praying. And, uh, you create a confusion. Okay. For scripture on authority in the name of Jesus, you can read all this uh, in vision. Uh, later, I will send you the note. Ephesians 1 and Act and all this. Okay, B, our authority comes with submission. The first one is intimate relationship. The second one is submission to Jesus' Lordship. Uh, James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself then to God. 
then mm -hmm. only you can resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay, you submit yourself to God first. Then with God's power, strength, you can resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. But you must take the first step. Ah. God, God is there always waiting for us. One, right? But you must take the first step. Okay, submit to God. Our authority comes thirdly with the responsibility to use it for godly purpose. Use it for godly purpose. Don't use it for selfish purpose to bring glory and honor to our name. Okay, godly purpose. Responsibility to use it correctly. Okay, so uh, uh, we already mentioned this verse so many times. If you don't rebuild the demon, he won't stop. You have to drive him out. Uh. If you don't drive, if you don't drive him back, he will not leave. So the keys of authority has been given to the church, but we are not using it most of the time because the demon hope that the church will stay ignorant. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. You know, half of Jesus Christ's ministry is healing the sick, yeah. driving out demons. Yeah. Ah. So most of the time, uh, we don't do that, you know. We are not using it most of the time. And the demons hope that the church will stay ignorant or maybe fearful because it's so controversial. Let's not talk about it. You see? So kept us in darkness. Okay, the last one, then I'll stop. Word of God. Is it? Uh, it's okay. If you want to go, you can go. Nah. It's okay. You see, it's so easy to remember, you know. It's B, you know, BMW car, BMW. Mm. You know, uh, this one is BNW. B. Blood, Blood, name, word. N. So easy to remember. Blood, N. name, N. word. BNW. Yeah. Right? The word of God, the third uh, weapon. This is the only piece of spiritual armor with both offensive and defensive. The word of God is a uh, spiritual armor, isn't it? The word of God is the sword of the spirit. It's the only armor that is can use for both defensive and offensive. The others, uh, armor, are just defensive. The helmet of salvation, the bell of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, all are defensive. Okay, this is the sword of the spirit. We have to fight spirit being with spiritual weapons. The word of God is a spiritual sword. The two ages sword is the very weapon Jesus used to withstand Satan's temptation in the wilderness. Scripture makes it clear that Jesus had studied Scripture and filled his mind with the truth. So in, in the moment of crisis, his sword was sharp and ready. All it took to defeat the enemy was every word that comes from the mouth of God. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Okay, let's read. See what the Bible says, yeah? Read Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. According to Bible study tools, 3 And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Ah, you hear that? So when Jesus quotes scripture, he is quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 8. Verse 3, B. That means the second half of verse 3. Okay? Hebrews 4, 12 also say, The word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and the attitude of the heart. The word of God, you know, it, it is truth. Okay? There is no lie in the word of God. It is living. The word of God is active. Okay, the word of God brings life. Okay, the word of God has the power to bring life and changes and transformation. The word of God. Okay, I'll, I'll not talk about what this Bible teacher says uh, because time is up. So, conclusion, uh, here are all the verses on the word of God. Conclusion, in order to wage war to resist the devil, believers need to know what are our weapons for warfare our position in Christ, our authority in Christ. We also must know how to enforce that authority by the blood of Jesus, the B and W. Name of Jesus, the word of God. Then we shall be able to stand against all the vows of the enemy, Ephesians 6, 11. And these are the reference book I refer to. 
spiritual warfare, faith confession, warfare prayer, spiritual warrior, bondage breaker, demon defeat, power of the blood. It was those days uh, that I prepared long ago and uh, I just refresh it, add some more meat into it. Okay, so that's uh, that's all. Uh, I'm not sure whether we have time for uh, question and answer, but uh, you all have been very patient and listened attentively. Uh, I I will I will give you the notes. Maybe not tonight. Maybe tomorrow I'll send to you. Then you can go through and then refresh your mind and uh, follow the instruction. Next week session four, uh, I'll touch on putting on the armor of God. Okay, the the armor of God. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I bet you have never heard that before. It talks about responsibility. It's talk about what is the what are the characteristics of each armor. How to use each armor differently and things like that. So it will be in detail. Okay, next week, the full armor of God, put on the full armor of God. All right. Okay. So uh, uh, I know it's getting late, but do you have uh one urgent question you need to ask any one of you? If not, I will call Elder Moonming to close us. Any one of you have any urgent? Uh, pastor, pastor. Yes, yes, yes. Um, on, on. Yeah. Uh, say uh, like this uh evil spirit they come in in different different forms now. Huh? Mm. it can come as a snake, can come as a as a you know as a yeah. uh, yeah. monkey, scares uh, uh, uh dog come as as, as a, dog, a, uh, protagonist yeah. you know protagonist it make you scared and all that yeah. So so at that time when I was in hospital, is it is it he came or you want to 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 scare me or what? <laughs> <laughs> because I maybe was always thinking, they, maybe uh, they are just playful or uh, uh, because I was always playing playing the uh, uh, worship worship songs you know uh, even in even in the, in the hospital. Oh, you but are playing I, worship song. Night, he still come up. Uh? Still come. Oh, okay. But that night maybe I was uh actually I was. Half a week, uh, I think half a week. Uh. Because I was going to sleep already. Then I can I can feel that like the, the, the snake coming up, you know. Coming up to to to, to smother me, smother and you know, smother. Want to want to take me take me away. Uh. Ah. But I speak in time and then blood run already. Oh, I see. Mm. Okay, thanks for sharing. Okay, I, uh, I, I, I think it's late. Uh uh if you have any questions you can put in the chat group. Okay, maybe somebody yeah, yeah. can can answer. I'm just putting the discussion in the chat group, lah. Okay. okay. So okay. I ask Elder Mooning to close us with a word of prayer. Can can can. Okay. Just be before I close, I just want to comment. I may talk about drinking poison, uh. Uh. Actually, a lot of our Muslim, uh, not not Muslim, uh, those uh, Malay believers, uh, uh. they testify. You know, their family members actually try to poison them. Oh yeah. And actually, they took it uh, and they didn't die. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because of God. Cost protection, ah. Protection, yeah. Yeah, they they actually drag it, and, and the family members all waiting for them to die, you know. Didn't they, die. They, they all didn't die. Yeah. They, they put all, their faith. They put their faith in. Ah, the they yeah. put their they, they got protection, actually. Yeah. You know? But of course, okay. we don't simply take poison and drink, lah. They want you deserve it, lah. Correct, 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 correct. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Man. Okay. Let's pray. Loving Father, we are so thankful, Father, that. Uh, you have uh, taught us today through your servant, uh, the pastor James, about spiritual warfare. And we know, Father, that we are in the thick of it. And uh, some of us uh, uh, not being taught, do not realize mm. that we are in the spiritual warfare. Mm. And uh, sometimes we have been wounded without even knowing why. Mm. So this, uh, this evening, we are thankful, uh, Lord, that uh, we have learned some. And, uh, and then we're going to learn more next week. And we pray mm -hmm. for our members of Christian's Lord that uh, they will uh, be diligent Lord, in studying our word. And mm -hmm. also, yes. uh, after this uh, session or these, these studies, Lord, recognize, Lord, we, we are definitely not to idle around, but uh, to, uh, uh, to prepare ourselves Lord, for the uh, uh, spiritual warfare that, is, that, mm -hmm. are, that are in the midst of us. Father, we want to pray, Jesus. Father, that you continue, Lord, to strengthen us, continue to equip us, mm. continue to enable us, yes. empower us, so that, Lord, we will be your warriors 
We will not be sitting idly doing nothing, but we will be warriors. We will be fully involved in this warfare. And uh, we will be waging war mm -hmm. uh, yes. against the enemies uh, and the of the enemies. Yeah. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you for teaching us. And uh, we look forward, Lord, to your, your, your the lesson uh, next week. All this we yes. pray with yes. your thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Amen. James. Hi, thank, thank you so much. James. Thank, thank you for Pastor James. Good night. Thank, thank you for staying back. Yeah. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night, Grace. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, see you in church uh, Sunday. Yeah, God bless you. Good night. God bless you.